I think has infected some of you guys. Sorry for that. <laughs> everybody in the South has y'all, and everybody in the Upland South has you all. They don't contract. I'm a Louisvillian, and I say you all, not y'all. Right? And then a little further north, especially in the middle band of the United States, where you can go to Pittsburgh and you can see t-shirts that say, I'm a Yenzer. Okay, so they're proud of it in Pittsburgh, right? So there's Yens and there's Yuz and Yus and so forth. So everybody has got a plural because no self-respecting human brain is going to put up with the fact that you don't distinguish between the singular and the plural, and so we make it. On the other hand, why would any brain put up with the fact that you need buzzing on the third person singular indicative when you already said he, she, or it? So it is third person singular, and buzzing is completely unnecessary, except for that one reason. So no wonder People think that the language is up there and not related to actual usage and the patterns of usage, which are quite natural in their development. Now, I don't want to convince you for one minute that all non-standard speakers are good universal language speakers, because when you tinker with something over here in your language, something else is going to fall apart, right? Look what happened to poor Chinese. Poor Chinese, poor Chinese had perfectly good syllables, syllables that ended in consonants in ancient Chinese. Wonderful language. All the final consonants in Chinese disappeared. So all of a sudden, four words which were quite different, or five words which were quite different, were all the same. All had the same first consonant, same vowel. Look what happened. They fixed it up, because nobody likes final consonants, right? And final consonants the end of where most languages in the world, Japanese doesn't have it, most self-respecting languages hate consonants at the ends of syllables. So do away with them, right? Poor old Chinese did away with them ended up with a bunch of homophones, completely simplified their language, and added tones. Oh, no. So now you take Chinese 101, and you're, oh, 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 oh. So they fixed up the language really well. They did away with final consonants in ancient Chinese. We know this is true, because Tibetan has preserved some of those, and we know that uh, in the Sino-Tibetan family, Tibetan is very conservative, and so we can find some stuff out about the history of Chinese by looking at certain dialects of modern Tibetan. So you see that, I mean, although I'm telling you uh, that, that this theory, this folk theory of language, ought to predict the kind of leveling of the language that language is just a mess, right? You fix up one thing, then something else is going to happen. Vowel systems, consonant systems like to be parallel, because we like to have cognitive simplicity. You fix something else, something else falls apart. And so the ultimate goal, I think, of folk linguistics is in a way so that we can say that we've provided a good ethnography of a people, not just to do applied linguistics, not just to look at language variation and change, but also within that ethnographic setting to actually provide a folk theory of language. It may differ from one culture to another. This is very, this is very good American English stuff, and most places in Europe that I've looked at have a similar theory. It may be a little different in many parts of Asia, but we have to do more work, but no more work can be done tonight. Thank you.